the, the point that is being made is that education is central. Education be, is. Is, is always the key. Uh, and and uh, to me, a major part, I reiterate something I said before, uh, is the more we can do to humanize the other. Part of, part of the kind of hostility and even bigotry that goes in both directions uh, is based on the image of the other that is dehumanized that you don't really see another human being, you just see them. And that's part of why I say the us versus them sort of structure dehumanizes the other. And study the history of, of warfare, and you see every society that engages in war, which is every society historically, uh, does a lot to intentionally dehumanize the enemy. It's a lot easier to you know, uh, fight the Vietnamese or to fight whomever it is when they're somewhat less than human, and you dehumanize them. But as you get to know people, uh, and you say, well, those Muslims are very violent. Well, Imad's not violent, and you know, so-and-so's not violent. The people I know aren't violent, but all the rest of them must be. That begins to break down when mm -hmm. you, know, you just hear you, people hear themselves saying, wait a minute, how is it that all the Muslims I know don't fit that stereotype? Maybe the stereotype doesn't fit. Uh, but if you don't know people, it's much easier to live with your prejudices. You prejudge something before you even know anything about it. So education, I think, and that personal encounter, programs like this, dialogue programs in churches, cooperation in community, uh, where people are working together on common concerns, uh, those are the kinds of things that I think help shift uh, away from that kind of stereotypical dehumanizing of the other. And are there, and it doesn't, doesn't only go for Islam. Uh, I remember Martin Luther King, I, I love to quote uh, his speech. He said that the most, there's, there, the most two dangerous things in the world is sincere ignorance and conscientious stupidity. Um, uh, you, see, you see quite a bit of um, um, ignorance out there. Um, and some, sometimes it's you know, people thinking they're doing the Word of God or they're, or they're preaching the Word of God or they're, they're, they're um, uh, carrying on uh, the will of God in, 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 in dehumanizing others and, and so on. Um, which in, in, in its, uh, you know, the, the, the word itself explain, explains uh, itself. They're sincere in everything they're doing, they're sincere in everything they're trying to carry on, but it's based on uh, ignorance and ignorant information. It really is. I think of uh, studying uh, a book of the Bible that is, is so controversial. If we just bring up the book of Revelation and we talk about that, oh my gosh, uh, probably some of the best uh, audiences uh, or numbers ha have been when we're talking about uh, that uh, topic, that book in our, in our church. And because people have so many different ideas about it. And, and good biblical scholarship uh, that I learned in seminary was when you have a preconceived idea that you place on top of the text and then come to that text, uh, that, is, that is simply the wrong way to go about it. And you've said, Dr. Nchasi, many times, you, you, you have to go right to the text first, see what is revealed, and work with that and talk about the history of it, talk about many other things, and then you have a much better understanding. And that's, that's what it seems that we're, we're up against here. People come to Muslims and, and, and Islam with uh, lots of preconceived notions already, place that on top of everything they hear, and, and now we're, we're, we're in, in a place of great misunderstanding. So you, you've Well, let me, let me just, uh, I, I wanna, let me make it a little bit more complicated. Okay, uh, <laughs> please do, great. I, I would like to uncomplicate it, but I think it's a little more complicated. And that is, no matter how objective we try to be, all of us are highly subjective. And so it's very difficult uh, to come to any text without a lot of preconceptions and a lot of uh, biases built in. And the more we can be aware of that, uh, the better off we are. It doesn't mean it solves all the problems, but it does make a lot of difference if you come to the Bible with the assumption that this is the Word of God, the, what you're expecting that you bring to that, or if you come to the Quran with the understanding this is literally the Word of God, as opposed to even a, an objective non-Muslim who comes to the Quran and says, uh, I mean, historically people might have said, well, this, this isn't the Word of God. What in the world do people see about you know, religion in this or truth in this? Well, you're not going to see it if that's your approach. But even if, even if you're trying to be more objective, it is difficult uh, because there's still that, you're not coming with the same set of assumptions that really allow the text to open up. And you know this, you've preached for years 
you can preach on the same passage 20 times. That's right. And all kinds of things uh, come out to you that you see you've never seen that before in the prodigal son. You've never seen that before in the story of the Good Samaritan. Well, the same is true for, uh, for the Quran. It's a very much a living text uh, for people who come to it and embrace it. The key, I think, what's helpful uh, when, you, when you're studying or trying to understand a religious tradition other than your own, is not just to be reading it and thinking about it anew, but to be engaged with people for whom it is uh, understood that way and say, what does this mean to you? What do you see here? Help me understand something Absolutely. of what is going on here because you know, I'm not coming with the same set of assumptions, but I really do understand why, you know, how this is so powerful. What is it you see that I'm missing or that can, can open this up for me? So it, it is a little bit more complicated. And the key there, again, I think is to understand that we're all much more subjective than we imagine. And so to try and be as aware as possible of our subjectivity, we're all in a process of growing and learning and changing and sometimes unlearning things that we think we know. Uh, and that again is part of the educational process that's so critical.